tough. Gut wrenching. But part of the uh, long and winding road. We made the mistake of giving her a little blue horsey in her stocking when I think she was five or six. Had no idea what kind of a seed we were planting. She started when she was eight. It wasn't until she was 11 that we bought a horse. Even when it was miserable like today, she would be out there and loving it. I mean, she'd always knew that it was what she wanted to do. And it's a calling. I mean, there's, there's no question in my mind. It's a calling both in terms of her connection to the horses, to the animals, the people, and to the competition. She is squarely focused on being a high-level eventer. I always liked horses as a kid growing up. Uh, my parents didn't really know what to do with it, you know, living in the city and everything. I think like most parents kind of thought or maybe hoped it was a phase. So every Saturday morning, my mom and I would head on out and uh, I'd ride a horse named Impy. He's, uh, he's the one that taught me kind of all the basics, taught me how to walk, trot, canter, jump, everything. I don't remember there being any fear, I just remember excitement. That first show, having fun and getting you know the horse all braided and cleaned up, glamorizing him. The whole experience, I think, really, really hooked me on it. I don't think Lizzie would be here. Truly, I don't think she would be here if she hadn't had a horse in that outlet. I mean, it is it is a part of her, and she definitely had some really hard times in school. It was uh, not a good experience for her uh, chemically. She had a couple good friends, but she's not a one for a clique, you know, at those ages, and then moving on into junior high and high school the group is where it's at and uh, she didn't really fit into anybody's group yeah she was bullied she's very sensitive so she would react and i think i think bullies target the people that will react and because she had a passion that people could target she would walk over to the bar every day she came through school with the support of her, her horse friends. Coming home from school, I knew, oh, okay, I'm just going to go to the barn. Like, it's, I don't have to worry about having friends at school. Like, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. You just go to the barn, and then you have your horse. And then, you know, horse friends are usually better anyway. <laughs> Then she and I mounted an expedition to Alberta. That's when she met Vixen. She was four years old, super, super hairy. She had come out of a field in Alberta, you know, in the middle of winter. 
You know, I really like the, the expression she had, kind of her very soft, calm eyes. She'd eat fuzzy peaches, like no horses ever does that. And we always joked that she was more of a dog than a horse. I'd show up to the barn and Lizzie would have Vixen just in the driveway and she'd be in the barn and Vixen would just be standing there. You normally would leave a horse and they'd take off and you know, you'd have to go chase after them, but no, Vixen just hung out. Anything Lizzie was feeling down about or having a bad day, I guess, she'd go see Vixen and it would make it better. That was part of why she was so special. She would kind of have this effect, you kind of smile. She'd have fun with her and they'd play together. And it... She was like a very overprotective mom. She would go away for a weekend and she would leave Vixen's food in a Tupperware container and there'd be like a little apple and a little note saying Vixen's lunch. She loved her all the way through. Winning, losing, it didn't really matter. She, she loved her. You really do develop a relationship and that's something I strongly believe in. You know, relationship building time with the horse, you know, bonding time uh, and letting, letting your horse be a horse and enjoying them for who they are and they can enjoy you for who you are. You know, if you don't, if you don't have that, that natural side, then it's all artificial. I was quite young to have a young horse. It was, it was a lot of work, it was really hard. A lot of days that were frustrating. You know, I was told by a coach that uh, Vixen wasn't gonna go pre-training, which is sort of a novice level equivalent. I knew there was something in her. She had the heart, she wanted to do it. She wanted to jump those big jumps and she wanted to gallop. The coach never really took me seriously. Most people don't have any idea what eventing is. Well, that's how they used to test war horses. The three disciplines of dressage, stadium jumping, and cross country. And it was all to check whether the horse would be properly dutiful as well as physically capable of, of work on a battlefield. She was an amazing jumping horse. She lived for cross country. Cross country was her element. Like that was where she shone. One day, unfortunately, we, uh, she fell down. They said she was fine. I, I didn't, there was something in me, that a little bit of a gut feeling. I was like, this isn't right, this isn't right. You know, I, I gave her some time off. But then when I did get back on her, she was uncomfortable. She was very uncomfortable. Her condition progressed, it got worse. You know, she started having difficulty seemed like she was having difficulty breathing. She kind of hyperventilated and tripping, tripping a lot and tripping bad. It was something in her spine. She was unable to run and that's, that's what she lived to do. I couldn't tell her, you can't run. It, it's bad for you, you can't. She, she just didn't understand. That's not fair. I couldn't do that to her. I think that will be forever. One of the hardest, hardest decisions I've made. My students will tell you all about Vixen because I, I constantly say, oh, well, she did this, so I, I needed to respond this way, or little things that I, I don't even realize necessarily that I'm, I'm bringing her up. Vixen was always that underdog, a horse that people underestimated. Oh, 
she gave me opportunities that I could have never even hoped for. It shaped me. It, you know, everything I did with her has shaped me as a rider, as a coach, and as a person. I know I'll never find one like her. I don't know that another horse will ever replace Vixen in her heart, but I do hope that she finds another horse, a different partner and a different friend. You can have that again. You know, if you get into a tough spot when you're jumping, your horse will kind of go limp, right? And they'll go, oh, he stopped riding. When life gets tough, kick on, add leg, push through. Keep going. Kick on. <laughs> And I find that I love you more, that I love you more than I did the day, than I did the day. Mm -hmm. The day. Out of time Whatever I do